Hi there, I'm Nyx, and today's video is all about starting the linked list explore card on the Leak Code website. First up is solving the design linked list problem. And as usual, I'll give you all the details of the entire process, through the planning of the algorithm, to the coding of it, to the analysis of time and space complexities, as well as looking at lead code rankings. If that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. Welcome back, and let's get started because boy, we have a lot to do. So as the name of the problem suggests, this is essentially creating a linked list, a particular implementation of it. We can choose to do either a singly or a doubly linked list for this video. And since we're in the section of singly linked list, I'm going to do a single version. It reminds us what a node of a linked list contains, a value and a next. Value is the value of the current node. And of course, the next is the pointer slash reference and to the next node in the list. We need to assume all of the nodes in the linked list are zero index. And now we get the details of everything that we essentially have to create slash fill in. First thing being a constructor that initializes the linked list object. And now we have a get function that takes in an index. And we need to return the value of that index node in the linked list. And of course, if the index is invalid, we need to return negative one. Then we have three add at methods, add at the head, add at the tail, and add at some particular index, which is exactly what it says on the tin. Add at head, we need to plonk a value at the very beginning of the linked list. Add at tail, we need to plonk a value at the end of the list. And adding at the index, we need to plonk a value at a particular index. Finally, delete at index, we need to do the opposite of adding. So we need to get rid of a particular node at a particular index if it's valid. Then it goes through an example here showing the initial construction of my linked list, which creates an empty list, doesn't have anything in it, so its size is zero. And there isn't a node present in it that has any kind of value yet. The add at head, add at tail, add at index, all add particular values. By the time we call add at index here, the linked list has the value one, the value two, and the value three added to it. When we call get for a particular index, we get it to correctly report the value at that index. And of course, deleting at the index gets rid of the value that we want. All right constraints here. The index will always be greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to a thousand, as is the same with the value. It essentially tells us don't try to implement a linked list by using the implemented linked list in the library. Yep, we're not going to do that. And telling us that it restricts the amount of calls making to these particular methods. Now we have the raw structure of what we need to fill in. It gives us the linked list constructor. It gives us get the ads and the deletes. And then it gives us some information about how it'll be instantiated and called. So how do we do this? Well, for this problem, I think I'm going to do a bit of a hybrid of the planning stage and the coding stage. First, biting off certain small portions of what we need to do, figuring out how to do that particular section, code that particular section, and then moving on from there, building it up bit by bit. I think that might be a little bit easier to understand and follow. And when I was actually working on this problem, I didn't have everything planned out perfectly beforehand. I did little bits and pieces. I did experimenting. I did some research, looking up syntax, seeing if this would work or that would work and all that. So I didn't have everything planned out perfectly beforehand. So I am not going to do that here as well. With that said, where do we begin? Well, here, let us begin with the initializations and the nodes. What attributes does this linked list need to have in order to be a linked list? Well, of course, as the problem says, linked lists are composed of nodes. And each of those nodes have two attributes. It needs to hold a value of some kind. In this case, it'll hold integers. And it's also going to need to have a pointer. 
Yes, this problem we will be dealing with C++ pointers. I know, I know, scary, but we'll get through it. But what else does a linked list have to have in addition to a node? Well, in looking here, when it's initialized, it's of course empty. So any starting node, like a head node, is not going to have anything in it. And in addition, of course, it doesn't have a size yet, since nothing is technically in it. So our linked list needs to have a node with an ability to hold a value and have a pointer pointing to the next node. And it also has to have a size. So that's a good starting point to kind of construct the basic characteristics of what a linked list needs to have. And then when we have those core characteristics, we can start building up this constructor to initialize that empty list. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is create a private section here that is going to house all of those characteristics. This is where I'm going to put the node, this is where I'm going to create a head node, and this is where I'm going to create a size integer for it. And then once we have those characteristics, we can create this. First up is creating the node. And to do this, I'm going to use a struct. A uh, structure is very similar to a class. There are some things that are different, but for, for the purposes of not making this video three hours long, just think of it as very similar to a class. You can even create a class for the node if you so choose. I'm just using struct. Truthfully, for the purposes of this, you can use either one and the lead code website isn't really going to care. The node is going to have, again, two things, an integer variable that I call value, and I've created a pointer here. Pointer is called next, and I've set it to null because it doesn't point to anything yet. Now this particular syntax of declaring a pointer is what I tend to prefer, but if you use, say, this syntax, or if you use this syntax, all three of them are exactly the same things. All of them are creating a pointer. C++ does not care about that white space in between. So all three of those things mean exactly the same thing. But as I said, I prefer this particular syntax. Next up, I actually want to create a constructor for said node. And this one is parameterized, which is which structures are able to do. I'm going to pass some integer parameter called val. I'm going to set value equal to whatever that val is, and I'm going to set next equal to null pointer. And that is a complete structure for my node. Finally, I want to create two more things. I want to create another node pointer and call it head. And I'm going to leave it undefined for now. And of course, I have an integer variable that I call size. Now that I have created the nodes, I've created a starting node that's going to be the head of the list. And I've created a size variable. Now what I can do is move on to initializing that linked list. And what that essentially means is I want to make sure this head is initialized to nothing because the list doesn't contain anything yet. So that head node shouldn't have anything. And I want to make sure that the size of that linked list is equal to zero. So essentially I only need to initialize two things like so. Head equals no pointer, size equals zero, and this constructor is complete. Now let's move on to the get method here. Well, the first thing I can plan out is that the index is invalid here. We need to return negative one. OK, so what does it mean if the index is invalid? If we have an invalid index, that means we're either dealing with an index that is greater than or equal to our size. Because we have a zero index system, if we're given an index that is equal to a size, well, the highest index we have is size minus one. So an index of size or greater is invalid. And of course, an index of less than zero is going to be greater. But our constraints, that's less of an issue because we shouldn't ever technically get an index that's less than zero, but we can put it in for purposes of completion, which is right here. So if index is greater than or equal to size, then I have an or operator here. So or 
index is less than zero, we just want to return negative one. Now, what do we do if that is not the case? If we're given a valid indexed, well, how do we get to that index? Now, in contrast to an array, a linked list doesn't have the capacity to directly get a value at a particular index. We need to traverse the linked list and go on a bit of a scavenger hunt, finding each pointer that directs us to the next node and going one by one until we finally get to said index. Which means I essentially need to create a pointer that points to where we are currently located, what node we're at, and then go through the list with a for loop that increments the index. And then within that for loop, I need to essentially substitute that current pointer for the next pointer. Once I finally arrive at the index, then I can return the value of that node. So let's look at that code now. First thing I do, create another node pointer, and I'm going to call it current node. And I first set it to the starting place assign that to the head. Now the for loop comes in and it's a typical one. Index starts at zero. Our i is going to go to right before the index. So i is less than the index. And then of course we increment each time. And the reason we go to right before the index instead of being right on it is due to the code that is actually going to be within the loop. We're going to go and assign what our current node is to whatever current node next is. So point it to the next node in list. So bringing up a nice graphic here, say we have this list and each of these ellipses represent a node. Say we want to get to index two. Well, because we can't access that directly, we have to start at the beginning, starting at the head at index zero. And according to this loop, we go as long as i is less than the index. Well, since in this example, our index is two, we go to i being equal to one. So when we start, we're at the head and this line is going to execute. So current node is now going to be set to the current node's next position, which means this node right here, the one at index one. For loop resets again. Our index is at one now. One is less than two, so we're good. And now again, we are setting our current node to whatever the next one is. So we get to this node now. Now our index is two, and of course two is not less than two. So we stop here and look, we're exactly where we want to be at that index. So the for loop stops right before because the code here shoves us forward one more time to exactly where we want to be. Now that we're exactly where we want to be, all we need to do is return current node arrow value. Just as current node arrow next specifically gets us the pointer, current node arrow value gets us specifically the value that's part of that node. Now at this point, get is complete and we can move on. Now we're getting into these add at methods. And what I want to point out is essentially add at head and add at tail are really just special cases of adding at the index. Adding at the head, we're adding at index zero. And via this line here, if the index is equal to the length of the list linked list, i.e. if index is equal to size, then that means you add it to the end of the linked list. So this is just adding at the index of size and whatever value you want to add. So if we construct this method in order to handle all of these cases, then these methods whittle down to just calling this one with a particular special case index, i.e. this is just that. Add at index with zero and the value. Add at tail is just gonna be add at indexed size with the value. So it makes these two methods really easy. And now we can start focusing on adding at indexed. To start this one, let's first get the easy stuff out of the way, specifically this line here. If the index is greater than the length, the node is not going to be inserted, i.e. we need to check if the index is valid again. And that's very similar to what we did here. But instead of index being greater than or equal to the size, this is just going to be index greater than size. Because when index is equal to the size, well, that just means we're adding at the tail. So it's very, very similar to this. 
if index is greater than their size or index is less than zero, but again, we shouldn't ever get that. Since this method is void, we don't expect to return anything. We just say return to immediately get us out of this method. Now, next up, let's tackle the special case of adding to the head, adding at the beginning of the linked list. To do that, I'm going to need to create a new node. When I have that new node, I need to set its next pointer to point to what is the current head of the linked list. And then I need to assign that new node to be the new head. So let's tackle that section of code next. I have my node pointer, call it new node, and I've called the node constructor via the new keyword and passed val to it. Next up, I have an if condition. So if the index is equal to zero, I need to have new node next point to what's currently the head of the list. Now I can reassign the head of the list to be equal to new node. And that is all I have to do in order to insert something at the head of the list. Now, what am I going to do to handle every other situation here? Well, adding at a particular index still means we need to get to that index first. So we're going to have to do something similar to this section, which we had to do for get. We have to have a current node and we have to go through the list in order to get to it. So let's take some of this code and plunk it down here for use. For organization purposes, I've put that other node pointer, current node equals head, near the new node pointer, again, just for organization purposes. And now I've plunked this for loop, which we see here, down here. But look at what we actually need to do. We want to add a node of the value val before the indexed node. And we know from our creation of the get node that this set of code is going to get us right at that index. But we want to be right before that one. So in order to do that, instead of having i less than index, we want to have i less than index minus one. So bringing up our graphic again, this time, say again, we want our index given to us as two. We want to add a node right before two. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to create our new node. We need to set its pointer to point to the node at that index, but we also need to reroute the pointer from the old previous node and set it to this new node instead. So because we need to fix something at the node before the one at the index that we're given, we need to stop right there. And with this code getting index minus one, two minus one is one, we need to stop when index is less than one. And of course, the only one that's going to match that is index zero. But when this code fires off, it's gonna shove us to the next node which is going to be index one, which is exactly where we need to be, the node right before the index that is given to us. So adding that minus one is all we have to do to alter this piece of code to fit what we need to do. Now that we're at the correct place, we need to do those alterations. We have our new node created. Now we need to point new node's next pointer to current node next. And since we're at the index before this, current nodes next is pointing to the node at that index we're given. So we want our new node to point to that very same node. So new node next needs to be set to current node next. Now that we've made our new node point to the index node, it frees up current node next to be rerouted to point to that new node. Hopefully that makes sense with the explanations. I know I say I'm saying the word node a lot, but hopefully the graphical representation that I have showing to you now hopefully makes it pretty clear. Now there's one final thing we need to do before this method is complete. That final thing to do is adjusting the size, increasing it by one. And we wanna do this outside of the else statement because no matter if we're adding at the head of it or if we're adding at any other part of it, we need to increase the size in either case. And with that, this section is now done. Next up is deleting at the indexed. Again, the easiest thing to first figure out is the index validity check. And that's pretty much the same thing that's 
we have been doing several times now and it's basically this. <laughs> For this code, the only thing that changes is now this is back to being greater than or equals. If we want to delete something at the very end of the linked list, we need a valid index. And of course, the largest value that index can take is going to be size minus one. So if index is equal to the size, that is out of bounds of the list and not valid, just like it was up here. Now the rest of the logic for this method is going to be very similar to adding at the index. Again, we're going to need to take into account the special case of what if we have to delete the head? Well, we need to reassign what the new head is. So that's a bit of a special case and we need to consider that separately first. So next chunk of the code looking for that special case, else if index is equal to zero. Again, I have created a new node pointer, named it temp node, and I have set it equal to the head. Now that I have that head stored, I can reassign that head to be whatever the head is pointing to next. So the next node in the list. Since that one has now been newly promoted to the head, I am now free to delete that temp node which housed the old head and free up that memory for use. Now we have to handle all of the other cases. And again, it's very similar to what we had to do here. We have to first get to that location and we need to use a for loop for that. So let's create a current node and get that loop started. I have copied and pasted these bits of code from the above. You can see that it essentially doesn't have any changes. Current node is still assigned to head and this for loop is exactly the same here. And now let's look closely at what it is that we have to change when deleting a node and see if we have to make any changes to this for loop. So let's bring up some graphics. And because apparently for this video, I really like the number two, let's stick with that. Now this node at index two, we eventually want to get rid of, but that isn't the only thing that we have to change. We can't simply delete that node and everything is hunky dory because that's going to break the chain if we delete it without making any adjustments. And the key adjustment we have to make is the node that comes right before that, we need to reroute its next pointer to instead not point at the node we're going to delete, but point to the node that comes after that one instead. That way the linked list is still going to be completely chained together and we can then delete that node without any consequences because we've rerouted the pointer to the rest of the list, which means we still want to wind up at that node that comes right before the index. So this for loop doesn't need to change at all. Now that we are at the position we want, we need to reroute that pointer and then we can be free to delete that node. These three lines of code are what accomplish that rerouting and the deletion. Now this looks a bit weird, but what I'm doing is again, assigning a node pointer. I'm calling it the next node. And this is pointing to the node that is after the one that we want to delete because current node is the one that comes right before that. Current node next is pointing to the node that we want to delete. And then that node's next pointer is going to be pointing to the node that comes after that one. So current node next next is going to correctly point to that node. Looks a little weird, but that's how it's done. <laughs> that node is now stored in next node. We are now free to delete current node next, which is the one that we do want to delete. That one is gotten rid of. So now current node next can be reassigned to next node. So this is completing the assignment to route the node that we're currently on to the one that should come up next. Again, the last thing to do here is outside of all of these else ifs, we want to decrement the size by one instead. And with that, delete at indexed is complete. So that's it, right? Nothing else to do? I did do one more thing. And the one additional thing that I did was essentially create a custom destructor. Because in looking at this, when you have a constructor here, when a linked list 
is now going to go out of scope and is supposed to be destroyed. The default destructor that you are given is going to eliminate the head. But what if you had a lot of things added to that list? What if you added, say, five things to it? You didn't call delete at index for anything, and then you just let the linked list go out of scope. Well, the default may only just eliminate that head portion, and then the rest of the list has not been properly cleaned up. So to make absolutely sure that I have properly deleted everything that I have called new on, because for adding it indexed, we call and instantiate a new node every single time. I want to make sure that when a list is supposed to go out of scope, I'm going to call delete on every single node that the list contains and free up all of that memory. So here's a destructor. Little tilde sign is how you create one and just like the constructor has ex the exact same name as the class, so does the destructor. Exact same name as the class, except the, the little tilde in front of it. And in this destructor, I'm going to run through that list and specifically call delete on every single node. So I create a node pointer, I call it node to delete, and I assign it initially to the head node. And now, as long as that node is not equal to null pointer, I'm going to assign the head node to be head next, to be whatever the node comes next, delete off that node, and then reassign node to delete to be the new head, that next node in the list. And it's going to continue on and on and delete off all of those nodes. And with that, all of this <laughs> should be complete now. This should be the full implementation of a linked list for this lead code problem. First, let's click some buttons and verify that I haven't made any mistakes. <laughs> Judging finished. Okay, looks good so far. So let's go ahead and submit and see if I get any horrible red text or green text. Please be green text. Yay! It is indeed. All right, now that we have accepted here, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, time and space complexities. Going through all of this code, you're making a structure which is going to take up a little bit of space, but again, that is essentially constant space. You're just creating pointers and a integer variable. You aren't creating vectors or arrays or anything with variable sizes here. And that is essentially true all throughout this code here. So the space complexity will be something akin to a constant amount. So anticipate some order of big O of one space that is related to uh, the space carved out for the nodes. For time complexity, again, looking on through, the most that we do is in certain methods here, namely the get method, the, well, indirectly the add at head, add at a tail, because it ha calls add at index, and add at index has a for loop. And then, of course, the delete at index also has a for loop, and the destructor has a while loop. All of those are going to be dictated more or less by how long the size of the linked list is. The more nodes that are in the linked list, the longer it's going to need to loop in order to get through it. So for several of these methods, it can have on the order of a big O of n, a linear time complexity that is dependent on how big the linked list is currently. So with that, let's go and finally look at the rankings here. Eh, down fairly small on the list here. Uh, I come in around here. I've seen it kind of ping pong around this area as well. Now the one thing I don't know and that I anticipate would be a thing that happens is that if I hadn't had this destructor here, would I still get green text? And I don't entirely know that. So what I'm going to do is comment this portion out, and then we're going to test that. Okay, this section is commented out, so I no longer do this step. And let's see if when I resubmit, do I still get green text? I do! So 
This isn't strictly necessary to be able to get accepted by the Lead Code website, but for me, I think it's just good practice to get it in there. Uh, let's see the rankings, see if anything's changed. Nope, still here. Uh, again, you can click on these various columns to see what others have done. Really good learning experience here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, again, apparently getting rid of that one has now bumped me up here but again take this with a grain of salt i've seen the memory rankings of this code still crop up around here with that destructor in place so again it's probably just some of the natural variation in leak code rankings that you always see all right so that long amount of code is one way to solve the design length list problem. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it helped you out in some way. If it did, consider subscribing. And as always, I will wish you happy coding and to have a nice day.